Well, this is a, uh, a monkey that is turning from sitting on his haunches here, there, uh, monkey on his haunches, two eyes, mouth, uh, ear, arm going down, other arm going out, tail coming up. Tail curls around. This monkey jumps up into the air. All of his legs go up. And then he um, uh, he's not really, he's sort of in this position to begin with. That's what, uh, this is a flip side, flip side version of that. And um, he flips over he jumps up in the air and, and is now in this position back here, about in this part of the block. He's, uh, he's right here, and then he actually jumps up. And this is him, this is his tail on the other side. So he's sort of gone from one side, flipped up, and landed, and his tail is on this side. He's blinking and doing all kinds of other things in here. And this is a... Um, uh, this is his tail, uh, his two legs, two eyes, his arms coming up. This is sort of a transitionary position. Um, hard to explain. I will eventually create an entire new piece coming off of here that's him swinging off of a tree, and I will probably not use this slice or pieces of it. I'm going to carve out um, from this point, take away some of this, and then as I sculpt the new piece, it's going to be more defined. So this this monkey's a little bit rough right now because he's in this. When you when you're sculpting these huge transitional pieces, what I what I focused on was making him clear at the beginning. When you cut this slice, he'll be clear. Uh, making him kind of make sense in the middle as a position where his two arms and legs are hanging down, he's just staring straight at us, and then making him kind of clear here. In the middle, it's a little bit transitional. His arms have to cross, one arm has to cross his legs. A lot of other things fly back and forth when his arms and his legs are changing shape. And the same is true here, and the same is true here. So there's sort of uh, position, transition, position, transition, position, transition, and this is the tail end of that transition. It's clear enough to understand he's a monkey, but it's not really precisely uh, art as much as you'd want it to be, or, or character, I should say. It's not character defined. So I will, def I will, when I build the next piece off here, he'll be more character defined, and you'll see how his um, oh, how his. Uh, You'll, you'll be able to work on making the position that comes here and does these other things merge into this transition. And so this, it, to sum up, doesn't have to be too precise, even though you should work as hard as you can to get there. It's a, there's a lot of motion going on and a lot of abstraction that'll make sense in motion, but is less clear in any one single frame. So this one single frame is a little bit rough. All right, it was built off of what I want to talk about or, or um, how I plan. Um, this, is a, this is something called a uh, thumbnail. And I wanted you to see these, the thumbnails that get built. That th this is the thumbnail that I built to um, help me pre-visualize what would be going on in, in that block. This little section is the thumbnail of this. Basically, it's a head and a body. It's fairly, this is fairly crude. These other things are fairly complicated. Um, inside this section is um, this. Uh, it may be kind of hard to see, but that is actually the um, monkey's two eyes. His, um, 
arm coming up. That's his ear, top of his head. And he's um, turning, he's jumping up here and turning around to the other side. Here's his other side. That's his tail. His head is missing, but that's his leg and his arm. It's all what I defined in here more clearly. Uh, this is the jump up part, the transition in the middle. You can see that jump up is actually this. And inside here, if you peel it away, are all the parts and pieces that I roughed out to decide where the leg, this is like really key, where the, the arm that's over here crosses uh, the leg that comes uncurled and then um, how it finds a new position on the other side in this new position. So you can see that this thumbnail, if you peel away the layers of it, it contains the sort of beginning logic of geometry and where the pieces and parts of the arms that have to cross over and, and recross are. I know that it's kind of probably just a mush to look at, but if you sit there, you do. I'm doing a lot of thinking sometimes when I put this out. It doesn't take long to do. I do it in white because, hey, I can reuse the clay. It's also just cleaner on your hands. They don't get colored. Um, and you can kind of see it, or at least I can, in a more, as just pure shape. Um, this is the transition of the monkey as it goes up into into this kind of a shape. And then this is the this is where it all started, which is this is the monkey swinging in the tree. But he's up this is where I'm actually when I say started, I started at first, but I'm going to finish it last. This will be the part that attaches to the um, end here. It's built upside down. This is actually a complete reverse opposite of that. This is the arm upside down, uh, the head, the two legs. I didn't put the tail in. It's complicated. The more you put in, sometimes the harder it is to understand the thumbnail. So you just put in enough in the thumbnail to make sense to yourself. Uh, this is the face. Uh, the reason I built it upside down is that to have his legs swing, you have to imagine now, you have to flop this in your head. This is him hanging from the tree. So his arm is actually consistent. Um, let me grab that. His arm is consistently um, uh, sort of straight, running all the way through this uh, Lying because it's going to be attached to a tree. If you were to take a better look at this, um, this is the line of the arm running through uh, the center. Now, there is one moment where he flips his body and grabs with his other arm. His other arm comes up, one arm drops, and the other arm comes up. That's approximately. Uh, right here, um, where uh, these are his legs crisscrossing. You can see the le one leg is crossing over and the other leg is crossing over, much like a walk cycle, only the, the, he's flying out. His whole body, uh, it's based on this sketch, his whole body is being um, thrown from one side like this to the other and flipping over. So this is his backside and this is sort of his front side. And what I wanted him is swinging. This is a great uh, sketch of, you know, the way the body's extended out. Um, and this helped me when I was sketching it to think about how I was going to do this. Um, this is built upside down. It will be flopped completely over in order for it to continue off the front of this block. Um, that's him upside down with his arm coming out. It's kind of like uh, uh, this sketch. See this sketch right there? 
where my thumb is. It's pretty much, there it is upside down. Let's see if that makes sense. Nope. This sketch right here and that upside down. Um, this is the tail coming. Oh no, this is this. This is the arm. Sorry about that. This is the arm from one side to the next. This is the arm that's grabbing, and then this is this is the arm that lets go. But it's been grabbing all the way from here to there. This would be the straight part of the arm under here. The pink is the supporting material. It would actually go away. I would take all this pink off, and that's actually the real character. The pink just keeps the character pink, pink from falling over. So you have to sort of in your mind's eye imagine these parts are dis have disappeared and they're not there. That actually is the arm all by itself down there. Um, yeah, so that's gone. This is the arm holding on and then it's letting go from here and this is the other arm swinging to catch it. So there will be a pull. There will be a gap here where he's actually not hanging on at all, where he's holding, going from one um, arm to the other, and then it will catch on the other side and become this arm that's holding the... Uh, this arm is what's holding the pole. These pieces, of course, have to go away. They're just extra that's there to keep it from falling over. Um, so that's the thumbnail of the, the uh, motion sculpture. Um, this is the thumbnail that began it, this, that represents this part of what actually, you can see that it got a lot larger. Part of that is you're trying to put in definition and eye, um, you know, eyes, shapes, and other things that are much clearer. Um, so of course this part will be larger and longer too. It just, the thumbnail is just like a sketch again, it helps you, gen you know, physically understand it. There's two other thumbnails I want to show. Um, one is the, uh, these will probably be a little clearer to understand. This is, um, this is a man opening a trap door and pulling himself up out of a uh, cellar. Imagine he's in the floor in a cellar and he's pulling himself up onto the first floor. Um, this is the this is the sketch of the action from the door, the door opens, two hands appear, and then it uh, flops the door, the, the two sides fly to the bottom, his head his eyes show up, his head shows up, he pulls himself up, out, he flips his legs up and over, and then he jumps up, and then he's going to go down, crouching, anticipating, then jump high as the door closes, and then he's going to come down to land. Not all of this is finished, but roughly it is, begins here with two closed doors. This is the trap door. It opens up, and inside you have um, you have a dark. This would be the part. This is the opening. This is the dark opening of the trap door. It flops over to the other side. You can see these. This piece is um, a piece of. Uh, it gets very very skinny as it becomes almost a line. This line now flops over to the other side, and then it becomes. This is his head, um, this is his arms coming out, and then he's uh, pulling himself up and out. It's a little clearer from this side. What I'm going to do is follow the shape of these lines, and it'll help me understand how to extrude over time, because it's a dimensional, in a sense, a dimensional thumbnail, a series of keyframes dimensionally laid out. This will help me actually understand where the flow of the head is and where the arms are, where things cross over. I'll have to look at it maybe this way and try to pre-visualize where, where things cross over other things. Um, 
and there, therefore what needs to be built first because you build the thing that's in the foreground obviously has to be built first um, and then the parts that are behind it get built around it so sometimes arms and legs disappear while other parts reappear this will all help me conceive or conceptualize that here's his him growing out of the dark center of the pit you know his little legs down here um, he swings himself up he hasn't actually sprung up but what he'll do after this point is spring up these doors will shut close and then he'll land straight up on top of all this anyway I think it's a really um, interesting sketch of motion and uh, I think that that's a way I conceive of creating the extrusion first in in a sense 2D as a traditional artist or animator and uh, then in 3D as an extruded as an extrusion thumbnail there you go and then I'll build the extrusion based on feeling the flow of these shapes as they move through these sculptural places um, I just naturally built these as a basis because I understand how to, once you understand how to do rectangles and squares and flopping lines so they just help it helps establish uh, a basis on which these more organic shapes since these are going to work pretty well as a, as a basis of creating the illusion of a trapdoor opening this will help the organic shapes of the human form move, move through it and that leads to the last thumbnail I'm going to show on this tape which is an opening and closing it's a door opening and somebody walking out of that door um, here's the thumbnail for that this is like a hand sketch shows the door cracking open and then a head just appears a little bit and then the door closes again that's what's going on here right now this is the door it's opening wide and then this is the head and the hand in the door then the door closes and then it um, opens again and when it opens again there's a full, full full human form the door flops to the other side this is the point right here where it crosses over from being a very thin line to the other side um, and uh, this is the human walking out of that door the thumbnail of it this is the extrusion I haven't when I'm doing thumbnails I don't necessarily complete all of the shapes and here I understand what I'm trying to do which is this is the head the neck the arm um, this is where the door opens you can kind of what, what he's going to do eventually is grow in size walk down and become larger than the actual um, the actual doorway so he's going to walk forward at you over the ground and cover that ground so eventually he's going to become roughly about this big um, walking from here to here if you imagine extruding it his head will go from here to here and his legs will come all the way down this uh, I didn't complete because I I have to just think about it in the abstract and know that it's going to happen the, the real mechanics were to figure out these basic pieces here's the um, the way the door opens this is the negative this is the floor of the negative space so you can see that that's the tongue and groove of the of the actual door swinging and this is the negative space that holds it and then it fits there this will all of course be one joined block I've separated them just for the sake of portability for now um, if you were to open up again the opposite this is the same thing going on for the uh, extra piece of door as it flies open you can see this is the shape of it swinging from a when it crosses the plane to become the inside of the door showing and how it opens to become um, it fits right in there into the floor this is the sort of negative space that holds it in the floor this is where the arm is basically inside the door by the way although that's very crude um, this is again where you see the front of the door it opens um, 
tank flops that way. This is the back side of this event where this is going to here, between there and there. Um, and uh, that's the thumbnail of a man opening a door, peeking out, closing the door, and then opening it again and walking out. This is uh, an, extru an extrusion sketch, and it allows me to pre-visualize certain things. So then I can focus more after I have this somewhat built and figured out in my head. I mean, I thought about it once. I've thought about it twice. And so on the third time, I can actually begin to um, focus on the details, which will be the face, the eyes, the head, and little details in the shapes, uh, and also the texture of the door, and make sure that the door texture is flowing coherently so it really looks like a door. When I build it, you know, if I do wood grain or wood pattern or have a pattern, I can even put a, like a pattern inside the door like it's got some bevels and other things in it perhaps. I have to have this thumbnail because then I can actually focus on what's inside each piece. It's almost like the next step is to pre and then visualize the smaller parts that are inside each of these pieces. So having broken this down, I can start to break it down to the one more step because I know that these are going to be the general large shapes that are going to make it work and I can having this as a crutch in a sense I can focus on the smaller pieces that now go inside each of these more general shapes knowing that this is the flow and the coherent piece of the animation. This of course will grow in size a little bit or a lot. I, I try not to make things that are larger maybe than my hand because it's just hard to cut them up and it's a lot of it's very expensive on clay um, so it'll be a little larger than this, um, but I do try to keep it as tight as possible. It really depends on whether it's a motion piece or a detail piece. So detail pieces tend to grow because you're trying to get so much in there, but if you're just trying to focus on the motion, you can generally keep it, you know, by that I mean gestural, that it's about the flow of an object in a painterly way moving through something. It's not about looking at all the buttons and follicles of hair and stuff like that. So uh, once you decide is it what kind of piece you're trying to do, then you can um, decide the scale of the piece, how big it is. Is it as large as necessary? I mean, I've built things as large as almost a sheet of paper in Stratocut, and that's kind of out of control because you need a guillotine and a mechanical device to cut it. If I'm going to cut it up by hand, just about the size of my hand is about all I can control when I'm knifing it because it just gets to be too unwieldy. So when you see this, and I imagine this to grow in size, it's going to get maybe about twice as big at most by the time I'm done. And the details are added about this big as my hand. And this is the thumbnail that has guided me to be able to actually focus now on the details. Uh, once I know the general shape of the motion and what's going on, I can now um, not worry so much in as I'm just building a bunch of textures, I can throw them in there and know where they're really going to go and really pay a little more attention to the detail of it. And that's this, this lesson, thumbnails and how to create extrusion geometry in your brain. Work with it this way so you don't actually have to um, use a computer or a stereolithography watertight model <laughs> in order to get the a dimensional um, extrusion result. Of course, I do that as well, but I don't do it for um, for analog strata cut. I refuse to use a computer to pre-visualize because um, that would just be wrong. Uh, I figured it out in my head before there were computers, and I continue to choose to do that because I think that's part of the art of it. Um, if you want to use a computer uh, for other things, I think that they're fabulous, and I am I, w I do and I will and shall, and that's a completely separate form CG Stratocut than the analog form here, and has different feelings and techniques that go along with it, which aren't really useful for for the analog form, but are a different kind of vocabulary and a different territory to explore. I'm rambling. Um, hope you enjoyed the uh, the uh, thumbnail concept here and this explains uh, sometimes how you can actually really make this stuff come to life for yourself in your mind and actually start to think in extruded time space before you actually have to commit all the extra, extra energy to make the textures and to finish it. Good night.